in this video, I went over every single Mezcal cocktail that you need to know. I made over 15 different Mezcal cocktails ranging from really nice, bright, and citrusy all the way to dark, herbal, and complex, and everything in between. Hopefully with this video, you're gonna be able to add a lot of different recipes to your repertoire using this amazing spirit that I absolutely love. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Let's make a Zapatero. This is one of my absolute favorite old-fashioned riffs that use Mezcal. It shows how versatile it can be and how it can combine with other spirits beautifully. Right, let's get right into it. First thing is an ounce and a half of Mezcal. We're gonna use Del Maguey's Vita. We do a half ounce of bourbon. I'm using Old Granddad's Bottled and Bond, or Bonded, in the proper way. Yes. We're gonna do two teaspoons, which we're just gonna do bar spoons of Orja which I'm actually only gonna do the one. One dash of Angostura. And one dash of chocolate bitters. We're gonna add ice. Then we're gonna stir it down so it's nice, chilled, and diluted. Grab our glass, put a large cube in it, and pour this out over the top. That's a very interesting color. And then the garnish for this is a grated cinnamon. So fresh cinnamon grated over the top. And an orange peel. And there you have a zapatero. Mm. Awesome. That's so delightful. Smoky from the mezcal, the bourbon gives it a nice underlying, uh, almost like woody kind of flavor. And then the orja is, gives it a nice sweet element. The chocolate bitters do come through and you get that grated cinnamon right on the nose. It's Chef's Kiss, such a great Mezcal cocktail. Yes. And the first thing we're gonna do is three quarters of an ounce of freshly squeezed lime juice that I had prepared ahead of time. We're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of honey syrup, which is just two parts honey to one part water, just so it's a little bit easier to get it out of the jar, bottle. So this recipe calls for about a half teaspoon of Angostura bitter, so we're gonna try and get that it's probably about two dashes, so you could probably get away with just doing two really good dashes of the Angostura, but I'm gonna be as precise as possible with a little measuring spoon here. And then we're gonna do one ounce of Blanco tequila. I am using Tromba. It is very delicious, and it's one that we've been using a lot more of in my restaurant. Really, really recommend it. And then next, we're gonna do one ounce of Mezcal. The original recipe does call for Del Maguey's Vita, so that's what we're gonna go with. One ounce of Mezcal. And then last but not least, to the secret weapon of this cocktail. We're going to do one grapefruit peel directly in the shaker. And what this is going to do is that in grapefruit peels, there's a whole bunch of oils that get released when you throw it in there. Uh, and this is going to really round out the cocktail in a beautiful way. And then we're just gonna drop our peel directly in the cocktail shaker. And as we shake, those oils are gonna get incorporated into the cocktail and it's gonna elevate this cocktail beautifully. And now we're going to add ice to our shaker, lock our tin, and give it a good shake. All right, and then we're gonna grab our chilled coupe glass, and we are going to double strain this cocktail into the glass. Oh, that's a beautiful color. And this cocktail traditionally does not get a garnish. And there you have a Oaxaca night. Now, let's give it a little taste. Whoa, wow. Wow, my God, that is, that's incredible. It is light and citrusy from the lime. The honey gives it that beautiful sweetness without being overly sweet. The mezcal isn't overly smoky. It kind of gets mellowed out by the other flavors. The tequila does come through and the Angostura bitters gives it that little bite, but you really do get that grapefruit bitter taste which really rounds this cocktail out 100%. This is an absolutely astounding cocktail. Right. So the first cocktail I'm gonna be making for you today is called the Mezcalero, which is, it's kind of like a Mezcal Negroni with a slight little variation. So we're gonna grab our stirring glass here, it's a stirred cocktail, and we're gonna do one ounce of an Espadín Mezcal. I am using Los Vecinos del Campo Espadín Mezcal because I quite like it a lot. We're gonna be doing uh, one ounce of a Blanc Vermouth. I am using uh, La Fuerza, which is an Argentinian vermouth. Very, very delicious. But you know, feel free to use whatever Blanc Vermouth you have. And the big variation of this between 
uh, between this and like a regular Mezcal Negroni is that instead of Campari, we're gonna be using Aperol, which is actually a lot more my speed. I tend to think Campari is a little too bitter sometimes. And now we're going to fill this up with ice all the way to the top. And we're gonna stir it up, get it nice and chilled, nice and diluted. All right, now that that's nice and chilled and diluted, we're gonna grab our low ball here, a large cube, our strainer, and we're gonna just strain this out. That is a lovely color. It's almost orangey and not so red, so it definitely doesn't really look like a Negroni. Um, oh, and last but not least, we're going to be doing a grapefruit peel. Nice and thick grapefruit peel here. And I like to be a little extra, so we're going to flame this grapefruit peel. And then finish expressing your oils over the top. And there you have a mezcalero. All right, let's give this one a little, a little taste. Oh, that's nice. That's real nice. It's very smooth. I love the combination of the Aperol with the Blanc Vermouth. It's much less bitter than a regular Negroni. So overall, perfectly balanced. I love the addition of the grapefruit peel. I think it's an excellent cocktail. And super easy to make. Three ingredients, grapefruit peel. What more could you ask for? All right, let's move along to the next cocktail I'm gonna make for you. The next cocktail I'm gonna be making for you is called the Naked and Famous. And this is, by a fact, my absolute favorite cocktail ever. It is the one that really turned me on to Mezcal. It's the one that I love to make to, for people. And I, and I guarantee you, this is my absolute favorite cocktail. So I'm so pumped to get to share it with you guys in this video. So it is a shaking cocktail. We're gonna grab our shaker. And we're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of freshly squeezed lime juice. We're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of Aperol. We're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of yellow chartreuse. And then last but not least, we're gonna be doing three quarters of an ounce of our mezcal. I'm using Del Maguey's Vita. That's what the original recipe was made with. That's the one I think tastes the best in this. We're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of Del Maguey's Vita mezcal. And then we're going to add ice to this bad boy and shake it up. Get it nice and chilled. All right, pop that open. Grab our chilled coop here and we're going to double strain into our chilled coop. I'm in heaven. Every time, I am in absolute heaven. I love this cocktail so, 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 so much. You get that funkiness from the yellow chartreuse, that slight bitterness from the Aperol. You get that crispness from the lime and the mezcal gives it this nice underlying smoky flavor. I would do dirty, dirty things for one of these almost any night. Luckily, I can just make them myself. Right, there you have my favorite cocktail, but we're not done yet. Let's move on to the next cocktail I'm gonna be making for you. All right, so the last cocktail I'm gonna be making for you today is called Only To Consider. And it is a super funky cocktail and I'm super pumped to get to make it for you. So. It is a stirred cocktail, so we're, gonna, so we're gonna grab our mixing glass here. So the first thing we're gonna do is three quarters of an ounce of Pierre Ferrand's Dry Curacao. We're gonna do a half ounce of Campari. We're gonna do a quarter ounce of Fernet. Uh, the original recipe calls for leather beef Fernet, but I have Fernet Branca, uh, and we're just gonna roll with that. We're gonna do one dash of Angostura bitters. And last but not least, an ounce and a half of our Mezcal. Again, we are using Los Vecinos Del Campo Mezcal for this one. And then we are going to fill this puppy up with ice all the way to the top. And we are going to stir it down, get it nice and chilled. All right, and then now we're gonna grab our chilled Nick and Nora glass and we're going to Pour this out. All right. I'm actually really excited to see how this one tastes. I've, I haven't tried it yet myself. So the color is lovely. Last thing you're gonna do is you're gonna grab an orange and do a nice thick orange peel to express over the top. And for that, we're gonna grab our nice little butane torch because I like to be extra. And then you can just, the recipe says to discard um, if you would like, which we will. <laughs> and there you have an only to consider. All right, and let's give it a little taste. 
Wow, that is a crazy combination of boozy, funky, slightly smoky, and the fernet really comes through and provides a lot of the, my favorite parts about the cocktail. Like it really comes through against all these other flavors and it helps to balance out the Campari's bitterness. That is surprisingly very, very, very good. And the smoke is just a slight hint at the very bottom. Um, wow. Mai Tai, it is one of the most famous cocktails in the history of cocktail making. But today I'm gonna show you what I consider to be the best spin-off or riff on a Mai Tai ever. The Mai Tai is a cocktail that almost every bartender tries to put their own spin on or tries to create their own version of. And there's lots of really, really good ones, but the one that I, for me, takes the absolute cake, and maybe it's because I'm biased, it is the Tia Mia by Ivy Mix over at Leyenda in Brooklyn. But this cocktail is, like I said, a uh, spin-off on a Mai Tai, but it's a more uh, Latin American spin on a Mai Tai. Uh, the Mai Tai, in my opinion, is one of the most misunderstood cocktails because it's kind of been bastardized over the decades and you've been kind of left with a lot of really shitty versions of this amazing drink. So what really, what I love about the Tia Mia is that it is, it takes a very classic Mai Tai recipe and ups it with a, a whole new Latin American spin. But all right, we can talk about that after we make this amazing cocktail. So we're gonna grab our cocktail shaker. And this is gonna be a shaken cocktail, but we're not gonna shake it over too much ice because we're gonna be pouring it over pebbled ice. And I should say that in her book, Space Latin America, this cocktail actually calls for Del Maguey's Chichicapa Mezcal and the Appleton Reserve Rum. Uh, unfortunately, I have neither of those two spirits, but the two that I will be using in place are, I will be using Los Vecinos Del Campo Espadín Mezcal, which I personally love, it has a really nice smoky flavor to it and we will be using the Hamilton Pot Still Black Rum. It is a Jamaican rum. I love the funkiness of it. It makes for a fantastic cocktail, but if you have Appleton Reserve and the Del Maguey Chichi Capa Mezcal, go for that if you wanna be more traditional in this. But we are gonna grab our jigger and we are going to do one ounce of our Mezcal. We are going to do one ounce of our Jamaican rum. We are gonna be doing a half ounce of Pierre Ferrand's dry curacao. Delicious, delicious curacao, uh, very classic. Half ounce of that. We are going to do three quarters of an ounce of freshly squeezed lime juice. Make sure you are freshly squeezing your lime juice. And last but not least, we are going to be doing a half ounce of our house-made orgeat. Now in the In Spirits of Latin America, she calls for she calls for Orjat Works, Orjat, uh, it's, a, it's a brand of Orjat. We decide to make our own, and if, if you guys are interested, let me know in the comments down below if you wanna know how it is that I make my Orjat. Just something that I think might be interesting, but let me know if you think it'll be worth it for you. But all right, now that we have everything here, I'm really only gonna add just a couple of rocks to this shaker, because I don't wanna over dilute it since it will be sitting on uh, pebbled ice. So we're gonna grab about five or six smaller cubes put that in there and then we're just gonna shake it a little bit nothing too crazy just to mix all the flavors together we're gonna grab our rocks glass we're going to strain that out right in there and then we're gonna fill this up with our pebbled ice and then we're gonna garnish this with a lime wheel and a mint sprig so we're gonna put our lime wheel right there give our mint sprig a little slappy and put that right there. Just two little straws, place that right in there, and we'll give this a nice little taste. Just first of all, let's just look at how beautiful that looks. That is just an incredibly gorgeous cocktail, just at this point, without even tasting it. <laughs> wow, that is, it's a little smoky from the mezcal, it has that amazing funk from the Jamaican rum, the orgeat, and the dry curacao really rounded out with that almond and orange flavor, and the lime juice gives you that crispness of the citrus in this cocktail. Called the El Camino. And so I'm looking it up. I found the recipe on Imbibe's website, but there was no real history to it. Um, but when I was on Imbibe's website, when I where I found the recipe, I saw that this cocktail was from the Chestnut Club in Santa Monica. And so instead of telling you the history of this cocktail, I'm gonna tell you a funny story about the Chestnut Club in Santa Monica, California. 
Many, many years ago, my girlfriend, my beautiful partner and I were on a road trip down the coast of California. We started in San Francisco and ended down in San Diego. And on this trip, we happened to be in Santa Monica. And so we look up some of the best bars, cocktail bars, and we find the Chestnut Club. And when I tell you that this is one of the most uh, memorable experiences I've ever had in a cocktail bar, I am not kidding you. So we sit down at the bar and all of a sudden this larger older gentleman with a handlebar mustache and basically dressed like a cowboy in a cowboy hat comes, comes on over and asks us what we want to drink. And I'm like, this dude looks like a cross between like a cowboy and Santa Claus. And it was amazing. And so we order a Sazerac and he looks at me and goes, can I make you a, a Sazerac the way I want to? It's like a little bit more expensive, but you know, it's, it's the way that I love to do it. And I said, fuck yeah. And so this dude goes over, grabs a bottle of Th Thomas Handy Sazerac Rye, which if any of you know, it's a pretty expensive bottle of whiskey. And he makes me the most amazing, gorgeous Sazerac I've ever had. I spent $50 on a cocktail and it shook me to no end how expensive it was, but it was worth every single penny. Um, that's my story. I hope Cowboy Santa Claus is doing well. He really blew my mind and I loved sitting at the Chestnut Club. Uh, if you ever find yourself in Santa Monica, go on over there. It is amazing, absolutely amazing. But my name is Louie and welcome to my channel and let's get to this cocktail. Right, so we're gonna do one ounce of our mezcal. We are using uh, Los Vecinos del Campo mezcal. Nice, smoky, espadine mezcal. We are always, we're also going to do one ounce of Rittenhouse Rye Whiskey. This is probably one of my favorite bottles of, of spirits ever. I highly recommend this for any rye in any recipe ever. Drink it straight, drink it on the rocks, make it old fashioned. This is a bottle that I could, I, I love. I absolutely love and I should always have some on hand. Unfortunately, I took me a while to get one for our bar, but here it is. And we're going to do an ounce of this and we are going to do a half ounce of Benedictine, which is a French, li French herbal liqueur made by monks in France. Half ounce of that and four dashes of our Peychaud's bitters. One, two, three, four, four. Yes, I did count four twice. We're gonna top this bad boy off with some ice and give it a nice long stir. If you want to know more about Mezcal, I actually did post a video this week on tequila versus Mezcal. So if that sounds interesting to you, come on over here, hit that and watch it after this one. It would mean the world to me and I would love you for it. I love Mezcal and I love rye and this cocktail, I tried it last night uh, when I was prepping to make this video and it blew me away. I thought that the rye would be too strong and the Mezcal would be overpowering and the Benedictine just would create a really weird cocktail, but it creates a really strong sipper. If you like uh, a nice strong drink to get your night started or just to, to relax after a long day, I would highly recommend making this. Um, we don't, there is no sweetener in this because the Benedictine acts as a sweetener. Um, and I'll be honest with you, again, this is kind of like the View Carré. I don't know why it works, it just does. Uh, and it's one of those that you just need to try it to believe it. And also, just go make one. Just do it, just do it. All right, now we are gonna grab our low ball place a nice large cube in that and we're going to strain this out first off the color is just beautiful and then last but not least we are going to do an orange twist just to give it a nice little citrus element off the top and nose there so grab our peel express the oils over the top rim the outside and top of the rim and make a nice orange twist and rest it on the rim all right just look at that color it's like almost reddish in a way it's like red and clear and beautiful and let's give it a taste Ooh, ooh. that is smoky from the mezcal it has that strong spice from the rye the benedictine gives it that weird herbal complex taste and the four dashes of of Peychaud's bitters really add a nice element to it. 
The orange peel expressed over the top creates a lot of, uh, it gives you a good citrus element on the nose and rounds out the cocktail as well. Let's make a Maximilian Affair, an incredible mezcal cocktail, which is a contender to become a new modern classic. First, we're gonna do, of course, one ounce of our mezcal. Again, we're using Del Miguel Vida. We're gonna do one ounce of Saint Germain, which is an elderflower liqueur. A half ounce of sweet vermouth, uh, the traditional recipe calls for punti mes. I don't have any, so we're going with Carpano Antique. And then we're gonna do a half ounce of lemon juice. We're gonna squeeze this fresh. Did I swear to shake it in? Lock it up and shake it up. Then we grab our chilled coupe glass, and we're going to double strain this right into our chilled coupe glass. And lastly, we're gonna express one lemon peel over the top. I'm just gonna float it over the top. And there you have the Maximilian Affair. Oh, that's lovely. It's smoky, it's like herbal or, or almost like a little flowery in a way. It's kind of like herbal and has really fun, complex notes from the St. Germain. The mezcal gives it that ni nice underlying smokiness. The lemon juice creates the citrus element. The really interesting inclusion is the sweet vermouth, which really combines beautifully with these other flavors and actually is the bridge that connects them all. Such a f fascinating cocktail. Really good one. Wait. Said, this cocktail is a uh, tequila based cocktail and it is also shaken. So we're gonna grab our uh, little shaker and we are going to do two ounces of your preferred tequila blanco. Uh, I'm going to be using Luna Azul Blanco because it's one that I personally really, really love. So we're gonna do two ounces of our Blanco tequila. We are going to be doing a uh, half ounce of honey syrup. Honey syrup gives this cocktail and other cocktails an incredible dimension that something like simple syrup just kind of doesn't. Um, not that it's superior in every way, but it's something that I want more people to kind of play with. Um, the recipe also calls for three eighths of an ounce in this. Um, that's kind of a crazy measurement that not everybody's gonna be able to do. So I'm gonna just move it up to a half ounce um, just to keep it a little bit more simple. Half ounce of honey syrup. We are going to be doing a half ounce of ginger syrup, which you make by just pressing fresh ginger and mixing it with a little bit of sugar. Another incredible uh, ingredient for this cocktail that's gonna give it a little bit of spice and give it a little bit of heat and really, really uh, give you that nice gingery flavor without being too overpowering. And then we are going to be doing three quarters of an ounce of freshly squeezed lime juice. Always freshly squeeze your limes, kids. And then we are going to shake this up and pour it over a big rock. Pop that open, grab our low ball, put our big cube in it, and we're going to double strain. It is a very, very nice color, almost like a golden yellow uh, cloudy color. Oh, and last but not least, the last ingredient is we are going to be floating about a bar spoon of our Espadine Mezcal over the top. Uh, this is not going to overpower the cocktail at all, but it's going to just give it another nice level of heat and smoke that's going to mix beautifully uh, with the ginger and the honey. Though it definitely doesn't overpower though, so you still get a lot of that tequila flavor through this cocktail. But why am I talking to you before I've even sipped it? <laughs> I will say I've been drinking quite a few of these lately. They have been my drink of choice at, after the end of a long shift. Um, I've just been really, really digging uh, this combination of flavors. And then last but not least, we're going to be uh, garnishing with a piece of candy ginger. I'm gonna stab two of those and put it right there. All right, so let's give this uh, cocktail a taste. Mm, so, the first thing that I notice is that that mezcal on top, it actually manages to hit you in the nose before you even taste the cocktail. So you get that nice, delicious uh, mezcal smokiness on the nose, and then you dive into the cocktail, which is incredibly refreshing. Uh, the ginger and lime just play so well together, and the honey builds this beautiful bridge between the two flavors. The main flavor still remains that tequila, but the mezcal gives it just a little bit of oomph, almost like uh, it just kind of spices up the cocktail just a little bit. Excellent, excellent, excellent cocktail. A great use for your tequila and your mezcal. Um, who doesn't love a simple and refreshing cocktail? And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to make a Los Altos. 
a perfectly refreshing, simple tequila and mezcal cocktail with some pineapple. I am obsessed with mezcal, if you can't tell by the sheer amount of videos I make on, about mezcal on this channel, and I love mixing it with tequila. And this cocktail, the Los Altos, is a super refreshing and incredible uh, cocktail that combines mezcal and tequila with pineapple juice. So this is a shaken cocktail, so we're gonna grab our little shaker. So we're gonna do an ounce and a half of our tequila. We are gonna be using a Partida's Blanco tequila. So an ounce and a half of that. We're going to do a half ounce of mezcal. I am using Los Vecinos del Campo. So a half ounce of mezcal. We're then going to do an ounce and a half of uh, freshly juiced pineapple juice. I've already done that ahead of time and we'll do an ounce and a half of this. Ounce and a half of pineapple. We're gonna do a half ounce of freshly squeezed lime juice and a half ounce of simple syrup. Right, last but not least, we're gonna add some ice and give it a good shake. Fill that up, lock our tin, and give it a good shake. All right, so we're gonna pop that open. Grab our chilled highball. Fill that up with some fresh ice. and we're going to strain our cocktail into it. Oh, and last but not least, we are gonna to top it off with soda water. Grab our Perrier and just top that off. And just to finish it out, some pineapple fronds. Right, let's take, a, let's take a sip of this refreshing, incredible cocktail. It looks very nice, very summery, very refreshing, very simple as well. And we will grab a little straw here. And we're gonna give it a taste. All right, you ready for this? I don't know if I am, I don't know, I don't know. Wow, that's great, that's incredible. I, I always love pineapple juice, tequila, and mezcal. They, for some reason, agave spirits and pineapple just work so well together. Um, and with this, you get a nice, refreshing, uh, summery cocktail that has that tiniest little bit of bite under it due to the mezcal. But the lime juice is nice and tart and crisp. The simple syrup rounds it out, and the, te the tequila provides a majority of the body. And, the pineapple juice is, of course, the most refreshing thing uh, about it. So you have a very refreshing summery cocktail with some incredible spirits as the base. You really can't go wrong with it. It is uh, 10 out of 10 for the summer and pretty much any time you'd like to drink it. All right, for this next one, we're gonna make something called an M&M. It is not exactly a cocktail per se. It is a shot that has been becoming really, really popular and it's super easy to make. And I think you're gonna be happy that I showed you this one. We are going to do equal parts of Montenegro and Mezcal. M and M. M and M. Get it? We're gonna do one ounce. And we're gonna do one ounce of Montenegro. And we're gonna do one ounce of Vita. If you wanna mix it up, you can, but it's pretty much ready the way it is. And it's a really fun and inventive shot that I think was gonna please a lot of people. Right, let's give it a go. Mm. I didn't finish it because I have to go back to work. Not because I'm a coward. Whatever, you guys twist, twist, twist my arm. So that shot's incredible because the Montenegro gives you this almost sweet, bitter, herbal element that combines beautifully with the smoky nature of the mezcal for a thoroughly enjoyable shot. You can make it as a cocktail if you want to build that uh, stirred over a large cube. I think that'd be really great or just in a coupe glass. But as a shot, it's super easy, super simple and a great thing to have in your arsenal. Mezcal is known for its strong and bold flavor, but what if I told you that you could make an elegant, delicate cocktail with mezcal? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you just that. The cocktail that I'm gonna show you today is called the Arenado, and it actually comes from uh, my current favorite cocktail book, Spirits of Latin America by Ivy Mix. So, so the first thing we're gonna do is grab our mixing glass, 
Ivy Mix's original recipe calls for a legal mezcal. I don't have a legal mezcal, but I have Los Vecinos del Campo mezcal. It's also a Hoven Espadine mezcal, and I quite love this, the taste of this mezcal, so we're gonna go with that in this cocktail, or in this rendition of this cocktail, I should say. So we're gonna do an ounce and a half of our mezcal. We're going to do three quarters of an ounce of lule. We're going to do a half ounce of Dolan Dry Vermouth. We are then going to do a quarter ounce of our yellow chartreuse. And I do it last because of how expensive it is, because if I had messed up, I don't want to waste this. And we're going to do about a quarter ounce of this. And we're going to do half of a bar spoon of our Luxardo Maraschino liqueur. Just be very careful. We only want about half of a bar spoon in there. And then last but not least, we are going to do two dashes of Pei Shed Bitters. And then we are going to fill this up with ice and we are going to stir. Again, there's no citrus in this cocktail, so we can just do it as a nice stirred cocktail. And we don't want to over dilute this form, but we do want to get plenty of water in this cocktail, especially considering these are all basically different kinds of alcohol. I'll be honest with you, I never thought mezcal could be used in a delicate sipping cocktail. Usually it's earthy, it's smoky, it overpowers certain cocktails, or you need a lot of other ingredients to kind of balance it out. But this cocktail, I'm, it really, really blew my mind. All right, and then we are gonna grab our low ball here. We're gonna serve this one over a large cube, and we will strain this bad boy in there. And then the last thing that we are missing is a grapefruit peel as a garnish. And we are going to express the oils from this peel over the cocktail, rim the glass, and I'm just gonna twist it up and place it on top of this beautiful cube that we got. And let's give this bad boy a little taste. Oh, wow. That is, that is fantastic. That is so good. Um, I don't even know where to begin to describe it. You have a lot of, some of that smoke hits you initially, but then it gives way to the intricacies and the delicate aspects of both the, the Lele mixing with the Dolan Dry Vermouth. You get some of that cherry liqueur at the very end and the chartreuse just kind of helps bring more of that floralness to it. It is a exquisite, well-balanced cocktail that I genuinely never thought could be done with Mezcal, but that is fantastic. Mezcal is a very complex and sometimes even harsh spirit. But sometimes all you need is just a couple of simple ingredients to really make a fantastic cocktail with it. And in this video, I'm gonna be making for you a saladito, a cocktail that does just that. This cocktail, the saladito, actually comes from Regarding Cocktails by Sasha Petrosky, uh, one of my current favorite cocktail books. Sasha was the owner of Milk and Honey, a absolutely legendary bar in New York City. So first thing we're gonna do is grab our little shaker. This is a shaken cocktail. And this is a pretty simple cocktail. It's going to be two ounces of mezcal. We are using Los Vecinos del Campo mezcal, uh, one of my personal favorite Espadine mezcals that I've uh, been using lately. So we're gonna do two ounces of our mezcal. We are going to do three quarters of an ounce of freshly squeezed lime juice. Three quarters of an ounce, freshly squeezed lime juice. And then we are going to do three quarters of an ounce of honey syrup, which is for you to make honey syrup at home, it is two parts honey to one part water. Shake it up and you have yourself some honey syrup. And then we are actually not gonna be using regular cubes in the tin. Uh, this recipe calls for using one large chunk of ice. Apparently it helps create the desired texture for this cocktail and that's what we're, we're gonna follow it exactly like it is in the book. And so I have one large cube here that we're gonna put in our shaker and we're gonna lock up our tin and give this a couple of good shakes.
All right, so that should be pretty good. And then we're going to grab our chilled Nick and Nora glass here. Pop open our tin and we're going to double strain this cocktail into our glass. That's just a, such a pretty color for a cocktail. Very, very nice. And then the last two key ingredients are, we are going to be doing a pinch of cayenne pepper over the top, just the pinch, there we go. And a pinch of salt over the top. Let's just take a look at it. It's a beautiful little cocktail. Let's give it a sip. Ooh, wow. Oh wow, that's incredible. That's amazing. That is, so let's start off by talking about the mezcal. So you definitely get the mezcal first, but it is not overwhelming. I believe that the combination of honey and lime really, really helps to smoothen out that mezcal. So it's not super in your face. It's not super harsh. It's very mellow, but you definitely do get to taste that mezcal and it's not overwhelming at all. It is a very, very smooth cocktail. And then the salt and the cayenne pepper really bring out more of those flavors. So it ends up being very mellow, still pretty smoky. You still get to taste that honey and the lime and the mezcal, but the, the pepper and the salt just kind of elevates those flavors. Very simple and easy cocktail um, with ingredients that as long as you have a bottle of mezcal, you probably have in your house that you can make this cocktail with. For it net, chinar, mezcal, tequila, all in the same cocktail? Well, that's right. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to make a smoke and bitters, an incredibly amazing cocktail from one of my favorite cocktail bars on the planet. But this cocktail, the smoke and bitters, actually comes from the Hunt and Alpine Club up in Portland, Maine. And the recipe comes from their book, uh, Northern Hospitality, written by the owners of the Hunt and Alpine Club. So this is a stirred cocktail. So we're gonna be grabbing our little mixing glass here. And then let's get to it. We're gonna do an ounce of tequila. I am using Partidas Blanco, one of my personal favorite tequilas that are really hard to open. I don't know why they make it so difficult. Uh, there we go. We're going to do one ounce of our Blanco tequila. We're then going to do an ounce of chinar, which is an artichoke uh, aperitif or amaro, uh, but it doesn't really taste like artichokes if you ask me. We are going to do a half ounce of fernet branca. I know some people really dislike fernet. I'm one of the people who absolutely love fernet. Uh, anytime I go to a bar and someone pours me a shot of fernet branca, it makes me very, very happy. So a half ounce of fernet. And then last but not least, a half ounce of mezcal. We are using Oaxaca mezcal. It is very incredibly delicious and a half ounce of that. And lastly, we're going to fill this uh, bad boy up with some ice and stir it to dilute it and chill it down. I, I'll be honest with you, I really could do an entire video on how incredibly amazing Portland, Maine is. Um, and it's really interesting because I'm from just outside of Boston and you would think that one of my favorite places to go to drink and stuff would be in Boston. And that is partly the case, but um, I'll be honest with you, if you told me I could choose between going to Portland or going into Boston for drinks, I would pick Portland 10 times out of 10. I uh, was just there this past weekend and it was really awesome. I cannot get enough of the city. Um, every place just has incredible food, incredible drinks. It's a fun, walkable city and there's always so much to do. And I went on a Monday and Tuesday, which is, I consider my weekend, because those are the days I have off. Uh, and even though a lot of places were closed, it was still an incredible, incredible. Experience. And the Hunt and Alpine is probably up there on my top places in Portland to grab a drink. All right, and let's finish just diluting this. It probably should be about good. Give it a little testy poo. Oh, wow. All right, that sounds good. And now we're going to grab our chilled uh, Nick and Nora glass or a coupe, use whatever glass you have. And we're going to pour this out. Just up to the top, look at that. Oh, and last but not least, the one thing we need to do to round out and finish out this cocktail is a grapefruit peel. Nice, big, thick grapefruit peel. And we're going to express the oils over the top. Oh, look at that. 
and then you can discard if you'd like. You can make it a little hat if you'd like. We're gonna do that just for a little bit. I think it'll look funny. All right, and let's, uh, wow. It smells very fruity because of the grapefruit peel. Now let's give it a little taste. Wow, that is funky. Wow, that is really funky. That is, gonna give another sip. Wow, that is, that is just incredible. Um, it is, how do I describe it? A lot of the, the body does come from the tequila. Uh, so you get that nice um, agave forward uh, flavor to it. You get a hint of the smoke from the mezcal, but I will say uh, what kind of steals the show for me is the chinar and fernet. So you get some of that minty element from the fernet um, and the chinar adds that nice bitter element to the cocktail. I'll be honest with you, I didn't think this was gonna work um, because every time I've been to the Hunt Alpine, I've never actually tried this cocktail. Uh, but this is incredible, so incredible. And they probably shouldn't work together as well as they do, but hey, uh, the, this is just a masterful balance of, uh, of ingredients and what else you can expect from one of my favorite places. But there you have it guys, the smoke and bitters. If you enjoyed this episode, please come on over here and hit that like button. It would mean the world to me. Uh, and also consider subscribing. I post videos every single week on cocktail recipes, uh, how to bartend, how to make drinks, and what it's like to own my own restaurant and bar. And also make sure you check out the Hunt and Alpine. And if you're ever in Portland, stop in and grab a cocktail uh, from them. They truly are one of these places that I aspire to be like uh, and to be able to have as much of an impact as they have. Um, and I genuinely, genuinely enjoy uh, what they've built. So give them, so check them out. I'll link their social medias down in the, in the description below as well. Now I've got an amazing cocktail to get back to. And we'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers. This video, I'm gonna be showing you how to make a division bell, a tart, smoky, sweet, and delicious mezcal cocktail named after a Pink Floyd album. We're going to grab our little shaker and we are going to do three quarters of an ounce of our Aperol. So three quarters of an ounce of Aperol. We're going to do a half ounce of Luxardo Maraschino liqueur, uh, which will essentially be doing double duty where it will be providing the cherry flavor for this cocktail, but also will be the primary sweetener of the cocktail since we're not using uh, any sugar at all. And then we are gonna do three quarters of an ounce of freshly squeezed lima juice. And last but not least, we're gonna be doing an ounce and a half of our Espadine Mezcal. I am using Los Vecinos del Campo. Oh, and that's just enough. That was the last little bit of this bottle. You know what? We'll just last couple of drops in there too. And then we're gonna fill this up with ice and give it a nice hard couple shakes. All right, and then we are going to grab our chilled coupe, pop this open, and we are going to double strain right into our glass. Wow, look at that color. It's like a bright pink color. I love it. That is just beautiful looking. Oh, and the last ingredient is we are going to grab one grapefruit peel and we are going to express the oils over the top. And just let's just admire that, that is beautiful. Oh, wow. Okay, all right. That is, that is delicious. That is a little smoky, tart, it's sweet from the cherry liqueur, and a little bit bitter from the Aperol, but not overwhelmingly so. The grapefruit expressed over the top, you do actually taste that a little bit in the cocktail. Just a hint though. It is an easy drinker. It is very complex and perfectly balanced with all of those different flavors. Um, honestly, I don't expect anything less from Phil Ward. Uh, it is a fantastic, amazing cocktail, the Division Bell.
let's make a the last mechanical art. Funkily named cocktail that is really, really delicious. Let's get right to it. All right, so we're gonna grab our mixing glass for this one. This one is all equal parts. We're gonna start off with Del Maguey's Vita. We're gonna do three quarters of an ounce. We're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of Chinar, which is literally one of my favorite Amaros on the planet. Or Amari would be the more appropriate term, I believe. We're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of sweet vermouth. And last but not least, three quarters of an ounce of Campari. Add ice to our mixing glass, and we're gonna stir this until it's nice, chilled, and diluted. Our chilled coupe glass and strain this right in there. And lastly, we're gonna express one orange peel over the top. And there you have the last mechanical art. Fun, herbal, bitter, complex, and a kick-ass cocktail. The vermouth, Campari, and Chinar provide that bitter element with some of that herbalness. The mezcal provides that body and smoke, and the flavors just combine beautifully. A really, really fun one that I think you should give a shot.